more than morally bound for one above the duty I owe being a member of the Senate to make contribution to whatever is being discussed. I owe this sector a duty, Mr. President, and I feel emotionally touched by the contributions that my colleagues have made this far. I started my career in the textile industry. My first point of call when I left college was Kaduna Polytechnic. I'm sorry, Kaduna Textiles. I worked in the textiles for about two years. And it was during my most formative period of my life. I know and I remember very well what the textiles industry meant to this country. At the time I was working for the textile or in the textile industry, we had my employer then, Kabna Textiles. There were not less than five textile uh, factories in Kaduna alone. At the time, there were three textiles industries in Kano. There were two industries, textile industries in Funtua. We had two in Zaria. We had three in Ikeja. We had one in Abekuta. We had one in Onisha. And we had a textile in Aba. The textile industry, the textile industry, Gusau had one, as in Zamfara. The textile industry was one of the greatest employer of labor in Nigeria. It one of the factories that was moving the Nigerian industry during the first pre-independent, post-independent period of this country. Most of these factories I mentioned are either moribund or completely gone. Mr. President, we are beginning to get these statistics of the population of this country that we are 200 million people today maybe more than that. The textile industry need nobody to convince the other that it is, for all intent and purpose, a strategic industry. Because if you imagine, Mr. President, clothing 200 million Nigerians, then you can imagine the scope of demand for Tesca industries to clothe us. Recently, just about three weeks ago, or maybe four weeks, I think three to be precise, the central bank is making available about 100 billion naira to boost the cotton growing industry cotton growing. This will help, but it is not adequate, given the demand, the scope of demand. Next to agriculture itself, the textile industry is the biggest. Unfortunately, they started suffering for mainly two reasons that I remember. One, the issue of power, energy. Two, the issue of availability of raw material, which is cut. Textile industries began to resort to going to Egypt and going to Sudan to buy cotton and import to this country. By the time we had the port, the Hamada in our ports, and had problems with imports into the country, the imported cotton also began to suffer. And those who are doing business with us in the cotton industry also began to pull back. Hence, the total collapse. We are not producing. Those that are supplying us, you know, their line of supply was broken. And 
that's how we've got to find ourselves where we now are. Fortunately for us, in the spirit of this administration, now bringing agriculture to the front banner, it will open up greater hope that we will now be in a position the next year or two or three to be producing substantial quantity, but not all of what we need, cotton for our industry. Lest I forget, one of our colleagues, I think the Deputy Majority Leader, did allude to the fact of import. Border. Mr. President, over time, our businessmen and women have been spoiled because of the porosity of our border. We became a dumping ground. And the harm the greater danger that the economy faced is the fact that this porosity has hit the life vein, the artery of our survival, the of our economy. Because every import that this country receives, it is denying us a proportionate opportunity that that economic denial has, uh, uh, has given the, the exporting country the advantage. We are at disadvantage. Whatever measure we take to improve energy, and I'm aware that the government is doing more than the ordinary right now on the issue of energy. We have not maybe started seeing the real signs of success, but definitely is there on the way. If we don't close the borders and inculcate in our people the discipline, the love of their country, the love of made in Nigeria, whatever we do will come to nothing, Mr. President it will come to nothing. As long as those borders are open, as long as smugglers, smugglers and their principles are allowed to continue what they are doing to this country, the harm will continue. No matter what effort we make in the our economy, we cannot succeed. I hate to sound pessimistic, but that's the reality of the ground, Mr. President. So all the hues and cries about the border closure is by perpetuators of smuggling. They are using their capital to publicize the negatives associated with the closure of the border. The farmers of this country, and I'm one, I'm one of them, are happy with the closure. All the hues and cries about increase of price of food stuff, now lie. Now lie. Let us eat what we produce. Let us produce what we eat. Let's produce what we wear. Mr. President, China has 1.6 billion people. That's 1,600 people. Million. By the year 2050, Nigeria will be having something in the region of about 450 to 500 million people by projection of statistics. If we go along this spoiled child mentality of allowing producers from foreign countries to find markets to bring their produce, we are killing ourselves. There, like our colleagues were saying a while ago, 
Go to the back employment market. See how many of our children are there. Today, by statistics I got only about last week, in the course of this, our budget defense. We now produce not less than 2 million graduates, higher diploma and uh, 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 first degrees. 200 million. I'm sorry, 2 million. Why is this 2 million going to go? It's a time bomb. It's a time bomb. You take it or you leave it. Unless this economy opens. Unless we can employ these children. God forbid. And the only way we can find a way to employ them is agriculture is the highest employer of labor. You take it or you leave it. Textile depends on agriculture. Because agriculture produces what we eat and we produce what goes to the industries as raw material. Mr. President, we are happy we have a listening government in place today. We should do whatever we can 